So GM has just announced that they're going to be bringing in the new GMC Yukon in 2025. So if you don't know what a Yukon is, it's the largest style SUV, similar like a Land Cruiser 300 series, but they're actually like just bigger, squared off, real chunky sort of SUV, um, the largest style in the US uh, that you can actually get. You can get them in a few different sizes. Um, including like an XL version that's that's super, super long. They're a very, very nice SUV. Are they appropriate for the Australian market and what I think people will do here? Well, we'll probably have to, uh, let's dive deeper into that and we'll, we'll have a chat about it and see what I think and whether these things are gonna be up to scratch to compete with things like the Y62 or the LC300. So as you guys know, I spend a lot of time in America. I do a lot of stuff over there and have, have a lot of uh, family and friends over there. Yeah, these things are kind of the norm over there for the average sort of family. One of my best buddies has has a uh, a blacked out GMC Yukon, like at the XL version, the big version. It's pretty sick. It's pretty uh, pretty gangster. So it's just a wicked daily car for a family. Um, just the creature comforts in there, all the charging ports and stuff for the kids in the back and the I love the two captain's chair options where you walk through the center of the, the seats and you can actually walk straight through to the back and they're just a super, super cool car. But a lot of them are actually just two wheel drive. Not many of them are actually four wheel drive. The drive lines in these things, which I'm not really up to speed on, on these, these drive lines that are gonna be in these, um, these GM Yukons, because you can guarantee that people are gonna wanna lift these things in Australia, they're gonna wanna put 35s, all that sort of stuff on the things, um, bar work, and actually make them into a family SUV sort of tourer, especially for what we do outdoors, adventure, gun camping. Are they really going to stand up to that sort of stuff? Again, probably won't know. So as, as far as competing directly with like the LC300 or the Y62 from Toyota and Nissan, I don't I don't think they're up to that standard. In the US, you don't see a lot of these things sort of built up um, with bar work and things like that. They're more of just a family sort of car. There is the, the odd one or two, or the odd one or two like Expedition from Ford and things like that that kind of get around that I've seen on social media and that, but as a daily thing around America, you don't really see these things built up as sort of tours as we, we would do here. It's gonna be interesting to see what actually happens to these as they flow into the Australian market. So hopefully they'll be coming in as a four x four variant and not just two wheel drive because they're available in both drivetrains, but it's how, how heavy duty is that drivetrain? Like, is it gonna be able to be as strong as say an LC300 or a Y62? Um, is it gonna be just a soft sort of four wheel drive version? with not as, as hardcore components underneath it to be able to do what we do. The engine that it's gonna be coming with is a three liter turbo diesel, which develops 206 kilowatts and 624 Newton meters. So pretty sort of standard as to our sort of diesel engines here. The other engine is a 6.2 liter naturally aspirated V8 petrol engine making 313 kilowatts and 624 Newton meters. Um, that engine's shared with the Silverado. Both are, are paired with the, the 10 speed uh, automatic. Yeah, I don't see them really competing with the LC300 and the, the Y62, um, but again, I could be wrong. Um, we'll just have to see what the aftermarket industry here here does for those vehicles. Um, you're looking at probably like $120,000, just the conversion rate between US dollar and Australian dollar, unless that changes, but I can't see that changing anytime soon. And that's, see that's like 75,000, I think these things sort of go for in the US and you can spec them up possibly even higher than that. So it's gonna push it to about 120 Australian, something like that, and then, with the conversion and everything, you're gonna be looking at 150 grand for one of these things. Is it worth that much money? I suppose, like, look at all the American trucks hitting the market now with the, the Chevys and the Dodges and the Fords, and 
yeah, it's a massive market that's growing super fast and people just want to tow more, carry more, have more room inside. And I don't think it's like this, this, this stereotype with the Australian media that these are like a, some sort of wank factor um, as to why you need a vehicle this big. When you actually have one on a daily basis, it's great to have a small car just to rip around town in and, and all the rest of it. But when you have one of these and you live, you don't live in the city, you live out sort of west or... Uh, just the daily commute and stuff like that from where you have to go and do and pick up things and all the rest of it. A bigger vehicle is so much more comfortable, especially that when you live in those sort of rural uh, sort of towns and things like that. So yeah, the, the city sort of media folk don't really understand that. And that's why we do buy these American trucks and stuff is because they they can tow more, carry more, they're way more comfortable to drive and just an all around better vehicle for being out west and and living rurally so I, w I would own one of these in a heartbeat like i said i think gm is like the best in this market when it comes to family suvs uh, my mates one i absolutely love it when they pick us up from the airport super plush inside and yeah they're just a really nice nice vehicle to travel around in they're just sort of dialed in that aspect so it's going to be cool to see if this actually sets the scene for the SUVs that may be coming into Australia here very soon. Again, with GMC now announcing the, uh, the Yukon coming, I'd love to see things like the Toyota Sequoia come as well. Uh, Toyota's still doing stuff with the Tundra at the moment with like 300 vehicles on the road in Australia with customers doing all their testing. I would like to see something like the Fortuna phased out I'd like to see the Hilux phased out, to be honest, and things like the, like the Tacoma is basically the Hilux. I just want to see just more from Toyota in that aspect of just the looks department, just the, the American SUVs and the, the Tacoma just look way better than what the Hilux does and what the Fortuna does. I'm sorry if you own a Fortuna, but I think they're the ugliest SUV on the Australian market, to be honest. I'm sure they're, they're great for drives. I just, yeah, I think the Toyota Sequoia with the Tundra style front end just looks absolutely awesome, especially the TRD Pro one. So yeah, Toyota's still doing stuff in that aspect. So yeah, we may see once the Tundra is hopefully launched, if they do go ahead with it, then we may see the Sequoia come here uh, later. So if you haven't checked one of them out, I'll put a photo up now of what a Sequoia looks like. I think they look pretty pretty badass to be honest. The Chevy Tahoe is basically a GMC. They're pretty much the same the same car. They're just different trim and stuff like that, but they're made by the same manufacturer. So I can't see the, the Tahoe coming here. It'll just be the GMC. Um, I think they'll just bring that premium, premium version in uh, because it was just, they may do a cheaper version down the line, um, which would be a better price point. And if they do have a good solid drive line, the cheaper option may be what some people would go for if it was around that sort of 120,000 to 130,000 versus the 150 or 60 this thing's gonna be. And I think that would be, as long as the drive lines are good and you can actually do some good four wheel driving in it and you're not gonna be breaking components, it just depends on how soft this style of SUV is and I don't have a lot of experience with it. So it'll be interesting to see how they actually go when they land here in Australia and yeah, what people start doing to them. But GM absolutely kills this market with the GMC Yukon and those variants. My mates is all blacked out on black 22s. It, <laughs> it looks pretty, pretty awesome, pretty gangster. So yeah, there's just not a lot of other variants in this size of US SUV that I really like um, besides from the GMC. Uh, the Yukon in the XL version when it's all blacked out. Uh, the Chevy Tahoe looks pretty sick when it's all done up as well. I've seen some Chevy Tahoes done up when they've got um, 35s and stuff on them with uh, light bar racks and bull bars and things like that. They look pretty cool. Haven't seen many GMCs done. Again, that's more of the premium market. You're kind of buying that sort of a bougie sort of thing. Um, kind of a status sort of symbol when you when you get up into the especially then hitting like the, the top line of the GMC, then it even into Cadillac. But in this market, GM absolutely nails it when it comes to these luxury SUVs, I believe, uh, for that all around uh, daily family driver. So will I think Aussies will adapt this thing? I think so, yeah. The Chevy fans will adopt this GMC. I think the, the, the Chevy families now that have a Chevy 1500, 
will probably the missus will end up getting a uh, GMC Yukon, and the husband will have the uh, the 1500 sort of Ute or the 2500 Ute, and it'll just be a uh, yeah Chevy family. But as a as a hard four wheel driver, I'm not sure. It depends what the market does. Depends until they've been proven here in Australia and what they can actually do off road. Whether they will compete with the other larger SUVs like the LC300 and Y62. So finally, my thoughts on this thing. Uh, I've kind of already sort of gone through it throughout the whole video, but I think it's awesome. Um, like I said, I love my mates in America when they pick us up from the airport. The thing's pretty badass. It's all blacked out, XL version Yukon on 22s. It's, it's pretty tough, pretty nice inside. And yeah, I would like to see these things here in Australia. I think the more US vehicles that come here, the better. That's just my opinion. Some other people might not agree with that. Um, not seeing all these American trucks and all the rest of it everywhere. But in my opinion, I think these cars are, are really nice and they're just a, a step up level from what we have in Australia. You see, I had a 2014 F250 with auxiliary switches and all these different bits and pieces. And then over the years, I see that stuff now hitting our market here, like auxiliary switches and stuff. And it's like, the US market is just so much further ahead of us, like as in lug luxurious things and features in vehicles. The US, I believe, is probably five years in front of Australia when it comes to features in vehicles. I don't know why that is, it's really strange, but yeah, it wasn't till just recently we got the auxiliary switches in things like Ranger where my 2014 F250 already had them standard. It's it's pretty crazy how that works, but again, I think these are a good thing. I think they're gonna sell well, and yeah, um, props to, to GM Special Vehicles for bringing it in and converting it and giving it to the Aussies to, uh, to buy. But I'm gonna love to see what the aftermarket industry does with this vehicle. I think it should be super cool, so. Anyway guys, that's all from me. I'll catch you guys in the next video. See you later.